This is how KNC 913F looked when I bought it in January 2017. It had been given a professional polish that so looked at its best, but up close you could see that there was rust bubbling through underneath. It came with an extensive history file, including these photos which showed that it had had significant surgery at a previous time in its life. So this would be starting again for its third lifetime. This car was rusty in all of the typical places that you find on a Mark II or an S-Type. Around the wheel arches, the sills, the doors, the wings, around the indicators, pretty much everywhere needed work and this was going to be a brave project. I actually lost sleep when I first bought the car because I was so worried about the amount of work I had to do. So in this film I'm going to go through what I did to restore it. I've got plenty of photos of when I was doing the restoration on the underbody of this car but I don't have any film so I think the best way to show you is actually get the car in the air and we'll have a look underneath. Given how rusty the jacking points can get on these cars, it's nice to know that I've done a thorough job getting these jacking points sorted, because of course it makes it much easier lifting the car up on the ramp. One of the reasons there are so few S-types left is due to rust. Now they're rust in several places, this and the Mark II, because they're so similar in their body construction, all go in a similar way. So I'm going to walk you around the underside of the car and actually take you through the key rust spots. This is actually the order that I restored the car in, but pretty much everything from probably just above the bumper line and below is vulnerable. So this lower wing here, I had to fabricate a new one and put it in. What you've got to remember is that unlike a modern car, all of the wheel arches and everything like that are steel. So there's no material barrier like, or plastic barrier like you get in the modern car that actually protects the bodywork from um, the ravages of stone chipping that then gets water in and then causes the rust. So this is basically an outer wing and then you've got a steel inner as well and the two come together and they'd have been spot welded along this flange here. So I had to replace that both inside and outside and weld it all together. Then because you've got a steel flange of an inner steel and an outer um, wing as well, that needed um, work. Then I get round to this part on the outside here, so towards the rear of the, the back of the door, so there was some rot in here. The wheel arch itself inside here, again, that's all steel. So the back of the sill, which has got an inner sill, a middle reinforcer, and then the outer bit that you see, those typically go. So I had to cut out and put new plates in there, front and rear. So this here just protects the fuel tank. As well, so the fuel tank is right here. You can see it with these straps held in from underneath. Behind the front wheel here, this panel on the outside gets quite exposed, and the front part of the sill here. Now, there are jacking points underneath, front and rear, which I'm actually using to lift the car up at the moment. Those get all sorts of road debris thrown at them, water gets in, and over time, those rot out. So, if you want to actually lift the car up like I am here, or with the jack that comes with the car because it's a square tube and um, the jack goes inside and lifts the car up there. Those tend to rot out, so people would often get caught by the roadside wanting to lift their car up and find that they've got crunchy jacking points. There's a rubber bung that goes in the square tube. That's great for trapping moisture. Another reason that these cars rusted as well is if you think back in the day, rust proofing actually during the body construction wasn't that great. And of course, Jaguar built these bodies over in Birmingham and had to transport the bodies to Browns Lane basically putting them in a lorry and transporting it across um, probably about 10, 15 miles all the way to the Browns Lane plant for the trim and final assembly. So all of that just causes all sorts of problems in logistics where bodies would be built, they'd come out of the, the body construction factory at Castle Bromwich, they then might sit around for a bit, it might be rainy, the temperature might uh, change, all of that causes all sorts of problems that gives you early um, risk of rust to cars which doesn't help the, the long-term prospects of the car. Other bits that I had to patch on this are just up here. So there's a bit um, just inside the um, wheel arch here, which I had to um, create quite a complex panel and uh, cut out and stitch that back in because it kind of goes around from the inside of the wing to form the wheel arch. So that was quite tricky. Now at the front end of the car here, we've got 
exposed several areas where these cars go rusty. So we've got this reinforcement that goes to the front cross member. So this one goes across the car. These are really exposed. It's just a C section, so it's just like a, a box section with one side open. That can get lots of crap in and make it rust over time. So those are typical for failure. Above it here, we've got what's called the crow's foot. So that basically reinforces this curvature at the front of the wing. So it's kind of like got several fingers out that join the front cross member onto the bottom part of the front wing. It's just a pressed, simple press panel. So over time, because it's exposed on the inner part of the wheel arch, the road uh, debris from the, from the wheel and tire gets thrown up and just sits there. So you've got mud sitting there, basically rusting it away over time and lots of nooks and crannies for it all to sit. Then we've got the front longitudinal. So you can see the, the subframe mounting point here for the front suspension. That is directly in line with the front longitudinal. Now that is actually quite thick. I had to rebuild that. Uh, quite significantly because the front cross the the front longitudinal was really quite rusty coming around a bit further tacked onto the front longitudinal here and onto the front um, cross member we've got the radiator mounting points now those are typical for rusting out as well because they're just a very simple little pressing that needs to be welded into place but there's plenty of uh, traps for dirt and mud to, and water to sit in there so those can rust out as well so on this car this reinforcement is new the cross member's new. This is actually a shield that goes in front of the front cross member, so it's a very simple part, but it just pre protects it, uh, the cross member itself, from uh, debris from cars in front and that kind of thing. I've replaced these brackets that the radiator sits on, um, rebuilt the longitudinal, and then there's more cosmetic stuff above the line of the front bumper as well. So for this next bit, I've brought the car down a little because there are areas of rust around here. So there are rust traps behind the indicator here, Behind the, sun, the side lights point, of course, there's all sorts of uh, rust traps in and around the headlamp here. The saddle underneath the grille that joins the two front wings together, that rusted out, so I needed to make uh, a replacement for it. Uh, and of course, the same the other side. So there's various patches in and around all of this to kind of get rid of the rot and sort it out. So that then, once I got the new metal in place, I then had to very carefully rust proof back inside the inner wing by taking away um, anything that was left, cleaning it up and uh, rust treating. And then I've used a colour matched Raptor, which is a uh, 2K spray on protection, a bit like Schutz underbody protection, but it's, um, it hardens and it's, you can get it colour matched as well. So it actually improves the whole underbody look a lot as well as giving a good protection. The sills and lower wings needed similar work each side as well. But all four doors needed this lower part replacing as well. So I needed to get sheet steel and wrap them, cut the old bit out and wrap around the door frame and uh, do it in such a way that I didn't warp or ripple the door too much. Because of course, when you're welding along here, you can quite easily get undulations. So that was quite a lot of work uh, to get that good, but it's been quite successful. And it gives you a chance to look at the profile of each of the door shut lines as well to get them just right. The rear valance panel and the spare wheel tub, they can also be quite vulnerable for rust. Fortunately, on this case, they were okay. So it was just a question of uh, making sure that they were suitably rust protected from the inside. Any exposed seams were seam sealed. And then I again used the colour match Raptor to protect these from debris and any water getting in for further rust. So with all the rust seen to on this car, I then re-sprayed it in this unit with a friend of mine, Barry, who's been immensely helpful. He used to be in the trade um, re-spraying cars um, with his own business for about 25 years. So his help was invaluable to rest restoration of this car and I'd like to thank him for that. But in the end it came out really well considering that it was done in a less than ideal workshop, sp homemade spray booth, and uh, now looks fantastic in its original dark British racing green. So, was it worth it? Financially, of course not. It's taken me hundreds of hours to work on this body. Was it sensible? Absolutely not. But I've learned a massive amount and it's been a very interesting experience. Importantly, it's saved a rare and slightly unfashionable 1960s British saloon and given it a new lease of life. Thank you very much for watching. Please join me next time when I'll be looking at what I did in the engine bay and with the suspension of the car.